Good evening and welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Pastor Ken and we're so glad to be able to come to you this evening. You know, I keep hearing that scripture out of Isaiah 60. Uh, darkness would be in the earth and gross darkness on so many people. But the Lord, he's on you. And his glory is going to be seen on your life. So uh, don't be in fear. The word of God says fear has torment. But the perfected love of Jesus that the Holy Ghost sheds abroad, sheds abroad in our heart. Uh, that shed abroad love by the Holy Spirit, it cast out all fear. So tonight we're so glad to be able to share with you the uh, the subject matter of the Spirit of Restoration, Part 2. And um, right before we get into it, we're going to have Brother Mark come again uh, with his saxophone and just bless your lives. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
it's so good to be able to um, share the word of God because it's life to us, amen, who have found it and medicine to all of our flesh. So we're looking at the uh, subject matter of restoration and how, you know, it's the heart of God for his people to be restored. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, I will restore health to you and I will heal you of all your wounds. And of course, in the Hebrew, that word wounds uh, meant chronic illnesses, illnesses, infirmities that have been so prolonged that his people just adapted to them. And God says in this season, I'm going to restore you to health. And I'm going to heal you of wounds that have been prolonged. Maybe that prescription's been going on so long, uh, you've just adapted to it. You've stopped even praying about it. You've learned how to walk with that thing. But God says, in spite of the duration, I'm still going to manifest my restoration in your life. Boy, that's good news. Amen. So tonight, I just want to look at uh, three hindrances uh, to the the restorational process. Three things that uh, the enemy uh, would use to confuse us as God's people to to distort the reality of God's will to bring restoration into our lives. Now, uh, Joel two twenty five, the Lord tells Joel. And we said that's a real dilapidated situation. I mean, Joel comes on the scene wherein the land is barren. I mean, there is nothing. It is not a, it is unfruitful. And God tells Joel, prophesy and tell my people, I will. I will restore to you the years that the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm have eaten, and you are going to uh, have plenty, and you'll not be ashamed. So the self-same spirit that ministered to Joel is ministering to us tonight, and God is saying in spite of the virus, in spite of the layoffs, in spite of the calamities, he's still here for us, and he's going to restore us these days. He's going to restore back to us uh, the days, the years, the weeks that the locusts have stolen, and uh, we will not be ashamed in this season. So we said one of the things that uh, hinders the uh, people of God from being restored is a dysfunctional understanding of, of God's judgment. You know, if you really don't understand that we are in the dispensation of grace and in this dispensation, we understand at the cross, Jesus finished the work. He, he finished the work of our redemption. He finished the work of our atonement and uh, the major uh, obligation for the people of God is to believe what has already been done. We understand that in the Old Testament, it was basically performance driven. Uh, God said you had, to, you had to keep my law. But in this new dispensation, Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Our chastisement was laid on him. And with his stripes, we are now healed. Amen. Not only redeemed from the curse of the law, but are able to experience a grace that no other civilization, uh, uh, no other humanity that has gone before us, uh, behind us, has ever been able to experience. We are the dispensation of the grace of God. And so uh, you remember when uh, Jesus told the, the, the leopard man in, in uh, Mark chapter one, the leopard came to him and said, you know what, if you will it, Lord, you know, you can make me whole. And in Mark 1 41, Jesus touches the leopard and he says, I will 
be thou made whole. And it says that the leper was cured just like that. You know, it's God's will for us to be restored. And, and, and not only, uh, you know, if it's, remember this, whether it's self-induced, whether your affliction is self-induced or it's, it's come from a close friend or, or, or demonically inspired, it's God's will for you to be restored. So you don't think that, you know, well, I brought this on myself, so I made my bed hard. I'm just going to have to lay in it. That's not God's way. God says, I will restore you to health and I will heal you of all your wounds, regardless of how it came about. And so we said that one of the ways the enemy hinders us is from a dysfunctional understanding of God's judgment. And in Luke 5, 56, Jesus told his disciples, the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but he came to save them. He came to save them. You know, Jesus did not come to put salt on the wound. He came to redeem our lives from destruction. Now, Psalms 103, 10 says, he has not rewarded us. Uh, he has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Uh, remember in John 8, 10 and 11, when Jesus is talking to the woman who's been caught in adultery and he says to her, uh, have no man condemned thee? And she says, no man, Lord. And Jesus says unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So he gives her the gift of no condemnation so that she can come out of her dilemma. Remember, condemnation kills. It always dams up condemnation. It, it always hinders. It always blocks. Ultimately, it wants to stop the progress of God in your life. And so you have to understand that God has called you to restoration. He has not rewarded you uh, or dealt with you after your sins, neither rewarded you according to your iniquities. He wants you to press forward. He wants you to move on. And so we thank God for that. And we see that uh, according to Revelations 12 and 10, it's Satan. It's the enemy. He's the accuser of the brethren. And in Proverbs 19 and verse 12, it talks about the wrath of the king is like a roaring lion. First Peter 5 and verse 8 talks about Satan like a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour. And so we understand that the enemy will try to impersonate the voice of God so as to deceive us and make us feel like, you know what? Everything that's going wrong right now is God getting me back for something I did in days past and gone. But we understand the devil is a liar. Amen. Put him in his place. God has not dealt with you after your sins. He's not rewarded you according to your iniquities. And you should hear the voice of the good shepherd saying, I will, I will, I will now restore to you the years that the locusts restore you to health and I will heal you of every wound. So we understand this. It says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27, uh, but a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. You know, the enemy wants to put that in your mind. He wants to put that in your thought processes, that uh, a fearful looking for of judgment. He wants you to have a, 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 a reflex to every time you do something wrong, every time something negative transpires in your life, that God is going to requite you uh, for that negativity. And we understand that is so far from the truth because Jesus told his disciples, I haven't come to destroy men's lives. I came to heal their lives. I came to give them life and that even more abundantly. Jesus has come to give you life. And so don't confuse this time 
of uh, mixed emotions. Don't confuse this time of, of uh, layoffs and um, not enough coming in. Don't confuse this time as God's doing. Amen. Understand that you are in the kingdom of God. You're not in the Babylonian system. You're not in the system of this world. You are in the system of God's kingdom. And it's clear in Psalms 91, he that dwells, he that stakes his claim in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. I'm going to prophesy to you right now. You're not going down, but you're going up. I'm going to prophesy to you right now that God has not called you to the low places. He's called you to the high places, but he wants you to connect with him. He wants you to connect with the kingdom of his dear son. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And we are upright in Jesus. We are not upright according to our own works. We are upright through the power and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has made us righteous. He has deemed us worthy. He called us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. And he's called us to be a light. He's called us to be the salt of the earth. Amen. And the light of the world. So don't look to the Babylonian system. Amen. Get in the word of God, spend time with the Lord. And number one, he's going to take the edge off you. <laughs> he's going to bring the peace of God that passes all understanding. And remember, peace is your umpire. Peace is the umpire. You know, you know we, uh, uh, we're going into baseball season. I think that's going to be a delay right now. But, uh, you know, the umpire is that big guy that's right behind the batter's box. And he says, safe, or he says, you're out of here. And we understand that the peace of God is our umpire. So you stay in the word of God. You continue to plow in hope. Amen. And watch the peace of God come into your life. And amen. Peace is a sign that God is working in your life. Peace is the signal that God is working behind the scenes for you. He's working a healing and a cure. Amen. He's coming up with the next phase of your life, which is good. Jeremiah 29 and 11. You know, God told Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah, he suffered a lot. Uh, many called him the jailhouse preacher. Every time he prophet, uh, prophesied the word of God, he got put in jail. Uh, but you know what? God said, Jeremiah, I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. Do not overplay this time of trouble, they're good thoughts and they're not evil thoughts. I'm going to bring you into an expected end. I'm going to bring you into a prosperous, profitable journey of life, even though this time might be a little, it might be a little, it might be a little troubling. It might be a little confusing. No, God has your best in mind. So we said we do not want to have this uh, fearful looking forth of judgment. Do not be judgment minded. Amen. Because God is is he's long suffering. He's good. Amen. He's like himself. He says to us, put on the fruit of the spirit and, and it's love. It's joy. It's peace, it's faithfulness, it's long suffering, it's gentle, amen? It's, it's, it's meek, it's temperate, you know? The, the fruit of the spirit is Jesus himself, amen? He said his burden is easy, his yoke is light. He wants to bless your life. Now, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So you gotta understand, this world system is run by Satan. You understand that, right? Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Whom the God of this world blinds the minds of the people who do not believe. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ should shine on. This is a glorious gospel. This is an awesome gospel. You know, remember, gospel means good news. 
And if you're of Jesus, if you're of the kingdom of God, if you've been born again, you, you got the good news. You have the good shepherd. You've got the good way. You've got the good life. Amen. And if it's not like that right now, God wants to, he wants to, uh, what's that word? He wants to metamorphosize your life into that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will that Jesus died for you to have. So make no mistake about it. Uh, this world, this world system is governed by a very dark outlaw spirit. And the word of God says in John 10, 10 and A, he's come to steal, kill and destroy. He comes to blind. He comes to deceive. Jesus said in the book of John, when he tells the truth, he tells a lie. No truth in him. Amen. So we cannot believe, amen, what the enemy is endeavoring to do. We have a better covenant based on better promises, even than the old covenant people, the Old Testament people. We have a better covenant based on better promises. Amen. And the Lord is good to you and I all the time and i hear him saying i will restore i will restore i will restore i will restore you amen not just your neighbor not just brother deacon brother pastor brother bishop he's going to restore you and let that glory rest on you let that manifested word remember we said glory is manifested word where do we get that from john said in, in john 1 uh, 14 the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory so glory is the manifested word glory is jesus manifesting in our lives and that glory is on you right now it's on you right now. You have seen manifested word. You have seen Jesus work in your life. You have seen healings before. You have seen miracles before. E you know, even little things, those little miracles. Amen. You know, he made a way out of no way and you paid your rent. He made a way out of no way and you paid your car note. He made a way out of no way and you paid your mortgage. Amen. And he's going to make a way out of this. Amen. And you're going to be better at the end of this situation. At the end of this virus. You're going to be better than when you came in. God's going to make a way for you. Because you know what? You're going to spend time in his presence. Amen. You're going to get hooked back up to the kingdom of God like never before. You know, in this downtime, you're going to spend more time reading. You're going to spend more time praying. You're going to spend more time even praying in the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself wrapped up in the love of God. And you're going to hear the words of Joel speak emphatically to your heart. I will, I will, I will, I will restore. Amen. So we understand Restoration is the will of God. And uh, we don't want to wear this, this burden of anxiety because uh, uh, we understand 70% of all sickness uh, comes from stress, stress-related illness. And 85% of the total work of sickness is psychosomatic. You know, that means just something internally uh, kept festering and it manifested a sickness. You, you secreted some type of, of enzyme or, 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 or something that's not healthy. And so we don't want to have uh, a look at our father as a cosmic killjoy. We don't want to see him as one who puts sickness and disease and disaster and woe on humanity. We understand who the real devil is. We know who the real outlaw spirit is. Amen. And he's a psychopath. There's no good in him. And so uh, you rest tonight. Amen. Open up your Bible. Amen. Begin to just read, you know, the, the soothing scriptures, you know, scriptures like the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack. He makes me to lie down in, 
in the green pastures of his holy word. He leads me beside the still waters of his wonderful Holy Spirit. And he restores my soul. You know, he restored. David said he restored my, my mind. He restored my thinker, my feeler, my chooser. And David said he restored my soul. And so my outlook was totally different. The doom and the gloom, the pessimism, the skepticism that comes with a dilapidated soul. David said he rid me from that dilapidated thought process. He, he, he let that soul of mine be restored. And then he led me down a path that was filled with blessing and peace and hope for his own reputation's sake. You know, God wants you to know that he's good. Amen. And he's, he's, he's brought you into his kingdom for a time such as this. And you've got good news to tell the world. Amen. Detach from your system. <laughs> Come into the system of the kingdom of God. Amen. Because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and joy and peace in the blessed Holy Spirit, amen? And the self-same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, amen, is alive and well in your life, but he works off his word, amen? So you're gonna have to eat the word. Remember he told Jeremiah, eat, eat, eat the word, eat the scroll. And Jeremiah said he began to eat and his word was, was, was good. The word of God was good to him and it became the joy and the rejoicing of his heart. And so uh, remember, uh, our God is good. Amen. He didn't come to judge you. He didn't come to kill you. He didn't come to set you back. We know who that is. Amen. Satan, who is the God of this world, he blinds the minds of people, lest the light of the glorious gospel. It's glorious. No man would resist the work of Jesus, the finished work of Jesus, if they knew how glorious this gospel was. You got to be blind not to receive it. It says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, you have to be blind. You have to be blind in your mind not to receive this glorious gospel. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And, and that self-same spirit that was on Jesus is on you tonight. And you got to start believing for the good. Amen. It says our father Abraham against hope. He believed in hope that he would be the father of many nations. Amen. And it says he got to a point where he was strong in faith. Started giving glory to God. You know, you know when you're getting strong in faith, you get your praise gets right. You know, you know, when you get strong in faith, when the word of God is filling your belly, amen. When the word of God is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart, you start praising God. You know, no organ, amen, no saxophone, no drums. You just get the praise and you, you become your own band. You get the praise in God because his word is in your mouth and in your heart and it's working in you a song of songs. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you feast on the word and just let the word of God show you how glorious this salvation you have. Just show, let, let's let the word of God, let, let the Holy Spirit show you his glorious salvation. And, you know, I, I picture salvation like a huge mansion. And it, it's so much through this salvation. And so many of us, all we do is come into the lobby, you know, with our papers, <laughs> fire insurance. <laughs> you know, we never go, we never go any further. Some of them, we never go into healing. We never go into prosperity. We never go into deliverance. You know, we never go into the high. We just sit in the lobby. You know, Lord, I thank you. Absent from my body, I'll be present with you. But you know, there's just so much more. There's just so much more to this great salvation. And uh, 
you have to know that your God did not come to judge you. He came to set you free from the law of sin and death and to satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed just like the eagles. Well, in conclusion, uh, I'd just like to say that we have a God who wants to restore us and uh, according to Exodus chapter 22, it talks about uh, verses one and verses nine. If an ox uh, would be stolen from you, uh, according uh, to the law of God back then, you get five oxes. If a, if a sheep was stolen from you, you get four sheep. Meaning to the degree of the devastation will be the degree of the restoration. God has restoration on his mind. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, God says to his people, restoration belongs to you. Uh, Isaiah 42 and 22, uh, this is something that uh, I want to close with uh, because you have to, uh, if you're going to be restored, you have to uh, employ the discipline of saying what God says. You have to employ that discipline. You know, it's a discipline to say what God has said in spite of what you see. And Moses said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, he is my God, I'm trusting in him. Surely he's going to deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hebrews 3 and 1, Jesus is the apostle. The apostle means sent one. He's the apostle and high priest of our confession. Why would that scripture be there? Because we are to make our confession of what the Father has said about us. And Jesus is there to receive that confession and make it manifest. It is a discipline. You know, you hear people say, you know, uh, Blab it, grab it, name it, claim it. Don't even listen to that. That's, that's blasphemous. You know? We're talking about saying what God says and employing the discipline of saying what. It's easy to say what you see. We do it all the time. You know? I have to correct myself. I'm saying what I see. I'm saying what I hear. But the word of God says we need to say what God has said about us. Amen? Moses said it, so it's not something new. It's, it's not something new. Moses said it as he was going through the wilderness with the people of God. He said, God taught me on the mount. He taught me how to say what he has told me to say. And he said, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You will protect us in this wilderness. You are my El Shaddai. In you we trust. Surely, sure enough, sure enough, you will deliver us from the snares from the, of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence, from the, the demons of darkness and the hounds of hell. Moses said, you're going to deliver us from it all, and under your wings we will trust. Woo! Well, my time is up. Time flies when you're having fun. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. But uh, I want you to just receive these words of restoration. And I know there's many wonderful words that the fivefold uh, brethren and sisters are, are sharing, you know. But uh, just know that this too will pass. And God has restoration on his mind. Isaiah 42 and 22, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore. Mm, that's sad. Do not let the devil devastate you to a place where you can't even get your sanctified lips to testify of God's restoration. 
He said, this is the people they've been robbed. They've been spoiled. They've been snared. They've been in prison houses. They've been left for a prey. And, and they have no deliverance. But no one cried out, restore. But you're better than that. Amen. Because your God wants you to be restored. And he's releasing even now the angels of restoration all through your home, all through the things that you so need, amen, God is releasing his angelic power so that restoration will be in your life and you'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, amen. Until Sunday morning, uh, we'll be here again at 10 a.m. We love you, thank God for you. You are restored.